your comedy minute. I'm Scotty T. I have a multi-talented young man named Tim Miller with me today. Tim, nice to have you here. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. The reason I say multi-talented because I've written down comedian, actor, filmmaker, writer, podcaster. Yeah, yeah, I do pretty much all those things. Do you do um, any? Pl- do you do any plumbing work? Do you do plumbing or any kind of electrical work? Ah, uh, no, but I am. I am. I am a butcher. I work in. At a yeah, I apartment. saw that. I wasn't yeah. sure whether we should talk about that. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't. I don't really do a lot of the cutting. I do most of the grinding. But... Okay, you know, and, and it's funny you'd mention that. I actually saw a pig, a pig go from, like, living and then not living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all the mess that comes with that. Yeah, and I never really see that process. Most of our meat comes in. It's already okay. already already. I'm pre-dead. sorry. I'm sorry. Well, let's let's first start with when did you first start doing? Co- let's start with comedy. When yeah. Did you, well, uh, no. Let's let's go even back further. Let's tell the people you're in Montana. Yeah, uh, Missoula, Montana, which is. Were you born and raised in Montana? Yep, born and raised. Born okay. and raised in Missoula. On your Facebook thing, you have Lolo, which is in the Congo. I thought maybe you were from there as well. No, well, Lolo's just a small town outside of Missoula. It's basically what you consider Missoula, but <laughs> I, well, I like to throw people There's all these, you know, the Congo. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I didn't even know about that, but I wish I would make, yeah. Tim, I'm puzzled, man. I'm puzzled oh. about this whole damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so okay, let's move on. You're in Montana. Yeah. When did you first start doing comedy? Uh, about nine years ago. It'll be nine years ago in June. This June. Okay. Uh, 2015, I guess. Right. And yeah. you're an actor, filmmaker, writer, and I have podcaster because it jumped out at me. I always, you know, things that jump out at me. Yeah. Your podcast is called The End of the Show, one of your podcasts. Yeah. End of the Show as we know it. And it must be pretty current because you have Curb Your Enthusiasm on there. Well, that's probably our most current episode. We just kind of go with whatever whatever yeah, finale yeah, yeah, you know, we feel I, like. I, I get that. Yeah. But w- are you a Curb Your Enthusiasm fan? Did you Were you sad to see it end or... Yeah, I've been watching it. I I don't think I didn't watch it like initially, but I think I caught up with it, and I think I've been watching the last couple seasons. I yeah. definitely like it. I mean, I grew up with Seinfeld. Seinfeld, one of my probably top ten shows, Is and it? then current up there too. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't mean to jump ahead because there's so much for me to cover. But, yeah. So nine years you've been doing comedy. You opened up for uh, Chris Kattan, um, mm-hmm. Trevor Wallace. And some other big folks over the years? Yeah. It's been a bit, but yeah, I think the biggest show I've ever done was with Trevor Wallace. We did like a 500-person theater, I think, in View, which was a fun show. I never heard of Trevor Wallace before, but he's kind of he's getting a little bit bigger now, I feel like, now that since right. that show. What was the Chris Kattan show like? Because I like Chris Kattan. I, I, I imagine he was a little wacky. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting meeting. It was kind of, it was a small crowd. We did it here at like this kind of a dive bar. It's down in a basement, got like brick walls and like a stone, just like a basement. It's called Monks, but it's me and like, I think he had like two or three other openers. Okay. Well, let's let's keep going down that line if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. Do you have a favorite show that you've done? Uh, can't and think of course, it. Like I've of been. Of course, of course. The next question is a least favorite show. Oh yeah. Uh, well, my least favorite show. I'll start with that first. Was, <laughs> How come I knew you? People always go <laughs> do the best first for me. Come on, do the best. Or you know, oh, yeah, yeah well, you guess... can do least. I don't care. I I don't mean to run shit. You do as you yeah. want. I mean, some of my best, like I, there's the yearly, I guess bi yearly annual uh competition in Missoula those are always fun for me like last year I ended up placing I think like fourth in the competition which is okay yeah I think I had a good set I mean I've been on tour a couple times um some of my funnest shows I did like a carriage house theater and I think um Sheridan Wyoming which was a fun time it's small crowd but it was like yeah yeah 
just where you, you know, and I, and I can relate just when you felt good coming off, like I did the best I could do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to the least favorite. Let's get to, I always love these, you know, I love. Yeah. Them. I mean, I've done a couple of weird, like pretty much South of me. I should never go South of me anymore. Cause I feel like <laughs> most of my bad shows have been down. Like there was one show I did. I did another competition that was like kind of audience vote. I ended up losing to a lady. Her whole set was her, just her in a Trump mask, the whole set. And you couldn't even understand her, but here, she somehow, here. yeah. Here, here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You lost to a lady in a Trump mask. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's got to deflate your ego a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, I just don't think it was my type. It was really my type of crowd. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I did one with uh, a young man who played to... Uh, you know, senior citizens. And my favorite line was, he said, I thought it was a life alert salesman, <laughs> you know? And, um, well, let's move on as far as, as far as your filmmaking. In other words, I know like you have a couple albums on Spotify. I, I think I just have one. I okay. recorded like a small album during the, during the pandemic. I think I okay. did like a, I did a Zoom show and I recorded it and put it out there. Right. Why well, apologize? Just because you are all over the place. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I you're try. on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, yeah. uh, Twitter, X. You have your own website, your YouTube channel, uh, 147 videos, uh, 13,775 views. You're all over the place. You got stuff all over the place, which is yeah. great, which is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. you know yeah do you have a favorite thing you like doing more is it stand up or making movies or you know go ahead i'm sorry i mean i enjoy stand up i feel like um i never really thought i'd be doing it this long like i kind of made a pact with one of my coworkers back in the day like i, I actually used to work with old people because i used to work at a retirement home okay just like certain food um but i made a pact with one of my coworkers. I think we both thought we were funny, so we made a pact to try one of the local open mics. Right. He ended up kind of stopped. I think he did it maybe a couple times, and I ended up doing it nine years. But um, well, you must I feel like for, you must enjoy. Yeah. It. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good way to travel and just yeah. get around and see people and make. I mean, I made tons of friends, just right different comedy connections. Yeah, but I feel like for me, I'm always I've always been more of a writer. Like even as a kid, like growing up, I've always been more attracted to the writing aspect. Like I've written a couple screenplays. Okay. I'm working on like a Christmas novel right now. Okay, that hopefully I'm gonna get published in the next year or two. Well, do you want to mention some of your stuff? Because I mean, you know, this is all about you. It's your comedy minute, man. And you know, I, yeah, I, hats off to you for nine years of, you know, you're just wanting like me. I'm just trying to bring joy to people's lives. Yeah. You're know, just I mean, trying yeah, to make just, people laugh or, you know, whatever it is that you do besides writing and stand up and, you know, your podcasts, I'm sure they're funny, you know, your attempt to entertain people. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I'm, I'm doing good work. I work uh, with uh, base Missoula here in Missoula. Um, what's what's, his, we, what's uh, the name again? Say it again. So I can mention, or we'll mention it. Uh, base Missoula. It's a, okay like a program of some independent living. Yeah. You have a, I'm sorry. Cause you do have that down base talks podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I do the podcast from that's where I've done most of my filmmaking. Like I've made a couple films with them and okay. acted in a few. It's like kind of an all, all abilities community center where people with like visible or invisible disability can come. And like, we have people from all walks, of life, people with like cerebral palsy or people with wow. like, yeah, like learning disabilities or whatever can come, and they've helped make movies, and it's real. It's a really rewarding experience to work with them, and just like make wow. movies. We put on a few, like there's an annual comedy, an, no annual horror film festival. We put we show our short films right. every year, and I think we have it coming up in August, the last weekend of August. Right, we'll have more. Like I directed another one. I have this franchise called Killing It which is about a comedian, kind of write what you know, I guess. 
but um... <laughs> wait a second wait a second wait a second killing it i don't know anything about that i never kill it i, I i'm barely getting through this interview with you for shit's sake well, I, I mean laugh i don't know once yeah make me laugh tell me a joke or i'll tell you a joke doesn't matter to me <laughs> tell tell me tell me a joke on here on we want a dirty joke, a dark joke. What kind of joke do you want? You pick the, the category, and I'll do it. Uh, let's go dark. Maybe dark and dirty, if you can. Dark and dirty. Do you want long or short? Let's do. Let's do this. One of the worst jokes I know. Okay. Now you okay. asked for it. Yeah. You asked for it. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. One of the dirtiest, nastiest. Now it's been replaced, but this is the dirtiest joke I've known for many years. There's a man, he picks up a really nasty, nasty prostitute. So he's there and he's lapping her pussy. He's lapping her pussy. And oh my God, he gets a piece of corn in his mouth. He spits it out. He's lapping away her pussy again. Oh, another piece of corn. Hey, honey. Corn, is there something wrong with you? Are you sick? No, but the guy that was back there earlier, he he was. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, yeah, I, I like that one. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't really show me. I I, I thought I was expecting a little bigger reaction. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's, I feel like as a comedian, it's hard to make me like burst out laughing. I feel like I, I like to be like really surprised. I feel like if you can get me like surprised with a you, really you, great. All job. right, I'll try one more, and then you got to do one. Okay, I'll try okay, one more okay. because I told you that was the dirtiest joke I've ever heard. Yeah, but it got replaced by this one. What's worse than going down on your grandmother? What? Banging your head on the lid of the casket when you're coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I like that. Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, now, Tim, it's your turn. And uh, I want dark, dirty. I want as dark and dirty, as nasty as you can get. Shooting and fighting and shit. <laughs> I'm an honest hoe. Uh, well, I guess sometimes I, I like to open shows by saying I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep this sun, this set cleaner than a nun's pussy. <laughs> That that is really good. Yeah. I've never heard that in my life. That's do you have one more? Do another one for me. Give me another one. I like well, I really like that one. Yeah. I gotta um, tell you, cleaner than a nun's pussy. Although I can imagine the people <laughs> wait, you said cleaner than a nun's pussy. That's yeah. wonderful. Oh, uh, I guess um I've been trying to get in a long distance relationship. Right. With, with myself. Which is which is why I've been trying to been studying astral projection. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get trying to get in touch with myself too. Oh, mm -hmm. Tim, that I, I don't think I'm gonna get past cleaner than a nun's pussy. Man, that that <laughs> I love people that make me laugh and God, I I'll be awake, I'll be awake all night with that one. I swear <laughs> to you. Well, let's move on because I want to touch on uh Star Wars, Darth Bluth, is that how is that how you say it? Yeah. Because yeah. on all of pretty much all of your social media, there's reference to Darth Bluth. And I pardon my ignorance, I have no I mean, I know Darth Vader from Star Wars, but the yeah. second part I don't get. Well, it's actually it's a combination because I love Star Wars, but it's a combination of Star Wars and the TV show Arrested Development. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. But yeah, the character, yeah. So it's just kind I of just yeah, me combining. That. Yeah, you yeah. love Arrested yeah. Development. Yeah. A lot of people, and I, I enjoyed that show when it was on. Mm hmm Yeah. So do you do a lot of Star Wars material? I do a fair amount. Like, I have, I feel, feel like some of my better bits are Star Wars related. And, like, I feel like always around May 4th, May the 4th yeah, yeah, be with May, you, I have to, like, bring out... You. Yeah, bring out the go Star ahead, Wars. Go ahead, go ahead and do a Star Wars bit. Do one of your favorite Star Wars bits. 
Uh, like, I guess I have this idea for like a Star Wars TV show or a movie or something, just something Star Wars related, um, where there's this comedian, he's working like the circuit, he's kind of coming up in the Star Wars, the galaxy. Maybe right. he's like playing at like Moss Eisley Cantina or, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he, maybe he gets a gig on the Death Star, like he, <laughs> Darth Vader hears about him and gets him on the Death Star right before it blows up. Maybe he even like, yeah, like, and then, like, he gets a gig at Star Killer Base, like in the future, because Han Solo had heard about him, told his son. Yeah, and I feel like I would, I would call it the Comedalorian. Oh my God, that's great stuff. Yeah, that's great stuff. I, you know, uh, I don't do a lot of Star Wars stuff. I, I like, I like Star Wars. I, I didn't, I didn't get past like The Emperor Strikes Back or whatever it was, second, third one. Yeah. And it started getting a little wacky for me. Job of the Hut and Yoda, yeah, Job of the Hut. That's I think that's when I lost it. Yeah. <laughs> Just this big blob of shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's like we touched on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And mm -hmm. I I loved Curb. I watched it from the beginning early on. There's a couple episodes on my dvr that i think are priceless mm -hmm. but there were times that i watched like the whole season with lynn manuel miranda or whatever the heck it is that whole season yeah. i thought was crap i didn't la think i laughed a half hour of my life i, I went back yeah you know i don't I mean, know if you yeah, know that way watching it oh uh, yeah i feel like it's kind of hit and miss like yeah the lynn miranda season did really hit for me I think the newest season hit pretty well, but I feel like maybe the season, yeah. the last season, the season of that was kind of okay. Did you ever see any of the earlier when like Funkhauser, Funkhauser's crazy sister, some of that yeah, stuff? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my go god, back. that was yeah. that was that. I really enjoyed that. Well, yeah, it's, let's it's, let's try. And I apologize. Let's move on. Do you have yeah. favorite comedians that you enjoy now that you you like watching? Um, I mean, I feel like I Craig Ferguson is probably the main kick comedian that kind of inspired me to even try it because I, I like Craig a lot. Yeah. I like when he, late, I liked so. his old late show. The late show he used yeah. to, that was great stuff. Yeah, I enjoyed watching it. I actually got to see him um Did you? I think like a, a month or two ago. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Did he was it there in Montana? No, it was uh Spokane, which is like Spokane, Washington. Okay. Yeah, like two or three hours away. So but yeah so you I got to see him. How was he? Was yeah. it like a live stand-up thing? Yeah, he did a show at uh, Northern Quest Casino. And he did. How how was it? He was good. Yeah, I got to meet him after the show because I paid. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. I, yeah. I ended up paying like two hundred bucks for tickets just to like have a meet and greet with him afterwards. T tell me like, about it. Tell me all about it because I really like Craig Ferguson. Yeah, I mean it was it was it was exciting. Like I did only got to meet him for a second. I told him I did stand up. He asked me how yeah. it was going, and I said good. And yeah. it was a good show. Like there was a lady like beside me. I don't know if you remember his old show, but he had like a coffee or a rattlesnake coffee mug. Yeah. On the show, and he had there was a lady beside me who had I guess had bought one of those, and like the whole time during the show, she was like holding it up and like moving <laughs> it back and forth. Yeah. Try to get his attention. Yeah. Did she end up getting his attention? I don't think so. She, I think she was part of the meet and greet after the show. So she okay, talked then yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Well, let me ask you about uh, at least one more thing that I have. You also oh. have, and I and I apologize again if I bring stuff up that you don't me. I'll cut it out. But some kind of jokes from the tub, from the bathtub. Did you do some stuff from the bathtub? Yeah, I had my own. It was kind of a talk show. I had it's called Laugh Tub. Um, <laughs> Where I just interview, like, uh, it was mostly local comedians. I just interviewed them. I was in like an inflatable bathtub, usually okay. in my sister's garage, and they, I'd interview them. <laughs> yeah, but that was like five years ago. I don't think I've done an episode in like five years. But I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to gain some credibility, my friend. I wrote down a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I it's something have... I feel like I want to get back to eventually. But no. Oh, really? Yeah, I feel like I have the idea for like a 
a reunion special or something in my head at some point. <laughs> well, I can tell already you're a really funny guy. Well, thank you. And, and you say you like writing more than, than anything else. Do yeah. you write, um, you know, just strictly comedy or do you write like darker or like you said, you you got a Christmas thing you're working on. Yeah. Well, the Christmas novel is more comedy. The basic idea is like, it takes place. It like tells the history of Santa Claus as okay. like an organization. Cause it's made up by like elves and okay. Like a, there's a wizard. And so it kind of starts with the first Christmas. Cause the whole idea behind Christmas starts, the Santa Claus starts with the birth of Jesus and it starts with like the three wise men. And then it kind of goes through the history from there, even up into the future to like the last, what would be the last Christmas. But it's okay. kind of got more of a comedic tone to it. Definitely. Okay. I, I didn't, you know, it's funny because I, and I didn't, I didn't bring it up for that reason, but do you know, I actually got into a fight with Santa Claus at the mall. Oh, really? shitting you i'm not shitting you i'm not shitting you <laughs> i'm telling you the truth <laughs> i'm not I mean, proud i'm not you. proud of it i'm not proud of it tim i'm not proud of it i just want you to know i'm not yeah. proud of it don't judge me yeah <laughs> no i would I had, never judge i, I had like... good reason to get into it with santa claus the rat prick <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure you did yeah I, I'll I'll give you the short version, and we're going to get to your comedy minute, okay? And I'll let okay. you go for my nonsense. Yeah. I was working, I used to work in the music business. And we had the Home Alone, do you remember Home Alone, the movie with Macaulay Culkin? Yeah, yeah. And then we had Home Alone 2, we had the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And they asked me, they said, Scotty, will you dress up as Santa Claus and come to the mall and give out, you know, coupons for the CD in front of the record store? This is all true. And Tim, I, I drove. It took away from my drinking time and partying. And I went to the mall and they dressed me up in this outfit. And I went out and I said, oh, oh, oh. And I'm giving out. The kids were loving me. I was giving out candy canes. And Tim, I wasn't out there two minutes. And here comes mall security. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you need to go back in the store. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, 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 sir, you need to go back in the store. <laughs> There's another Santa Claus in the mall, and he just complained. <laughs> so, Tim, <laughs> I took off the Santa outfit, and I went after Santa. <laughs> well, I don't know. You can't be on the same turf. Santa, Santa's got to... <laughs> I apologize, Tim. I apologize. Right now, I'm not getting enough oxygen. Well, my friend, I, I certainly hope you had fun. Is there anything else we want to cover? Anything else that you have shows coming up or anything uh, anything you want to talk about before we get to your comedy minute, okay? Well, I guess I'll just mention, uh, you mentioned Star Wars and my podcast. Is in right. the shows. We're actually doing a Star Wars special here coming up, probably in June. Okay. Um, we're doing we're it's a three episode we're coupling like i think three different star wars finales so okay well i'll try and air this before you you know so we're gonna converse you know now that we have our information and hopefully you know i'll i'll get this up beforehand and i'll help promote it i'll yeah. do anything i can to help you with it, any future endeavors you have i, I really like you you're a funny guy well i appreciate it and you're multi-talented i mean you know in the words uh, and not only that, I really like what you're doing there in in Montana with, you know, you, you talked about the the place where you film and all the people you're helping. And um, and not only that, you're a meat cutter. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. All right, my friend, I think it's time. Oh, yeah, I can, I can probably do. I'll do this. It, it's it's your comedy minute and they can go five minutes. I don't care. But Tim Miller, your comedy minute. Let's go, buddy. All right, I'll do a few of my uh, my favorite one liners or shorter jokes I have. Whatever um, you got. Yeah, I'll try to keep I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Much no, like no, no. Go as long as you want. It's your comedy minute, man. It can be five minutes. Your comedy five minutes. No, I'll, I'll see. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, much like the lollipop kill. So yeah. <laughs> we represent the lollipop kill. Yeah. It's a Wizard of Oz joke, kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Um, but I, I do have a pretty, I have a pretty self-deprecating sense of humor. Right. And I really, I really hate that about myself. <laughs> You know, I, I'm I'm a pretty I'm like a pretty typical straight white male, so yeah. like I haven't really overcome any adversity, but like I definitely undercome quite a few advantages. So okay, yeah, and I'm I'm working on an idea for a whorehouse slash soup kitchen. It's called the brothel. <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> I'm I'm also I also recently started my own one man religion called Timism. Okay. Uh, we have we have a hundred commandments, so we're ten times better than Christianity. Okay. <laughs> uh Go yeah, ahead. I, li I live in yeah, I live in Montana, as you said. We have like two seasons in Montana. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh winter and road construction. <laughs> or as I like to call them, depression and road rage. Cold and colder. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm there. I'm. I'm not like a. I'm not an alpha male or like a beta male. I'm more like an omega male. Right. I'm like the the last male anybody wants to sleep with. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went. I went to the doctor recently. It turns out right. I'm as healthy as a horse, but it's a horse with depression, and anxiety, and high cholesterol. <laughs> if only you uh, knew, my friend. If only you yeah. knew. No, I, I mean, I've been uh, I've been sick for the last couple of days. I mean, I mean, I got problems. I'm telling yeah. you, I've been so sick for the last two days. I haven't done a Zoom for two days. I'm sicker than shit. But I'm telling you, that I if there's not one, and I'm gonna give you credit, that cleaner than a nun's pussy, that 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 one I'll I'll that one will keep me up tonight. I might have to, yeah, I might I'll I'll end with I'll do one more. Go I ahead. Think I got, yeah. Uh where do beavers go to worship? Uh the dam, somewhere in the dam, right? Yeah. A goddamn. Oh goddamn. <laughs> Oh man, I love and and you got to know I grew up on Henny Young and Rodney Dangerfield. I I have I just love one liners. Man, they were all great. They were fantastic. Yeah, and I, this, I like to start most of my sets with one liners. I feel like that gets yeah. that kind of make, connects me with the audience and it. That's real smart. Yeah. That's real smart. A lot of comedians that are on here talk about when you come out connect them with the audience right away. So that they're on your side, and after you make them laugh, then they'll stay with you on the longer stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my friend, I I thank you so much uh, for being here. I hope you had fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'd definitely love to come back if you'd have. Yeah, I was just gonna say what we can do is, you know, I I, I tell a lot of folks, you know, we'll catch up in a few months. I, you know, I'm backlogged right now. I'm. You know, people yeah. do this and then they say, well, when's it going to air? And it's like, I feel bad because I'm two weeks behind, but I'm grateful that people want to come on. Uh, I love what I'm doing. I hope people come on and have a good time and tell their friends. And, you know, I want to keep this thing going because I just love, um, and I'm not being arrogant. I love the concept of showing comedians, you know, all aspects of it, you know? Yeah. Because every comedian I mean, has like their it. own little nuances and, you know, you with Star Wars and, and your writing and everything you're doing, you know, you're a very complex individual. Well, I try to be. Thank you. Yeah. No, it, it, it just all they got to do is watch this video, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, we'll, we'll make a pact. We'll catch up in a few months. Let me stop the recording. We'll talk a little bit off the record. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm thanks again for being here, Tim. I had a great time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure.